Okay. So I went to um, Marion, Indiana in, I don't know, 2003. And I, um, we, we had a big dinner there. And there was a woman there, and she was the daughter of one of my mother's bridesmaids. The one that wasn't her sister-in-law. Got it. Okay. Mary, yeah. And her name was Marion Van Winkle. And she had worked with my mother at the library. Now, the daughter, this is the daughter telling me the story about her mother. Mm -hmm. And she said that she just, just really cracked her up. My, um, you know, because it gives me a completely different picture of my mother. And it's like, here I am listening in to years and years ago. So, Marion Van Winkle and my mother are there, and suddenly my mother hears the fire engines. And she turns to, to Marion and she says, uh, There goes Daddy on a joyride. <laughs> I just thought that little picture of my mother talking about her father, it was just quite unique, and I wanted you to have that. That's great. <laughs> anyway, what, there's some story in the book about the short story that your mother wrote and sold well before. Um, Little Jimmy Firewagon. Yes, and she got that walking home from the library and Burr's fire engine raced past her in the other direction or something. Oh. She got, she, she was like on her way home and something, Burr was on his way somewhere and they said, hey, you know what, that'd make something about because boys fire are houses all and fire shoes fire. would be a good thing. And she said that was the easiest thing that she sold ever. And it was such a long time out, you know, the first attempt that she made and she sold it and she just got rejected short story after short story following that. So is that still around? That short story? No, it's just no, just, just what's in there. No. I well, unless Well, there was something else. There was a play before that, that was performed at libraries, yeah. like she was like that she never got paid for. That was like a free thing that she did, yeah. and it was performed at, at her library. But then, like other libraries, asked to perform it and and, and did. Yeah, the, the the characters were portraying figures from children's literature. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I think her brother Tom was Tom Sawyer. I think it's sort of like um, what do you call it, uh, Commedia dell'arte where they're just playing stock characters. Yeah, well, and, sort and, of. But, I mean, but different, like Scaramouche, you know, this Commedia dell'arte. And, yeah, um, but these, these characters aren't quite like that. I know, but they're, yeah. they're, they're um, yeah. but it's, it's taking liberty with the, right. you know, a lot of Commedia dell'arte was, was yeah. Um, yeah. improvised, as opposed to being written. <sighs> Someplace there are pictures of that, and I don't know where. It was Mother Library's Tea Party. That was the name of yeah, the play. Yep. That's right. Um, and the, so that's lost in the ether. No, I would say I think it was published in some magazine. But I mean, it would be a lot of digging. Yeah, but but the fire engine one is gone. No, that one I think is. That sure might story. be, but it was just... It was published somewhere. Yeah, she mentions what magazine it was in the book. Thinking... Uh, I don't know. If, and it, it, a, a lot of it was what you were saying also, of like her writing style was... It seems like it wasn't... Once she had the idea, she had the idea, and she didn't seem to have a lot of writer's block. It was coming right. up with the idea. Right. Like once, once the initial inspiration hit, she was she seemed pretty adept at just getting cracking and not like throwing a bottle of wine at the wall in frustration. Well, I mean, some of her books, as, as you've read through them, she she had to throw them all out and start over. Yeah. Some of her once she got sort of into the. Novel mode. 
um, yeah, it's just, my childhood really was unique. But then the fact that I met this girl in kindergarten, and her mother was an editor for Doubleday. Right. What are the chances? Um, but yet that caused all that turmoil. Oh, the damn schools, why did they do that? What turmoil? We had four elementary schools in um, Pelham, and every year a plaque was given to each of the schools, and in each one there was the best boy and the best girl from that school. The teachers voted on it. Is this a good idea? No, because the parents are going, you know. And it, it really hit us. Yeah, it's one thing if it's like a high school GPA because it's pretty, it's, it's yeah, the, the but numbers, this is, you know. And this is your younger, and you know, it's, mm. um, so we all said Quentin Murphy's going to win Best Boy, and Quentin Murphy did win Best Boy. But Alice Shirley Pigeon, Betsy's mother, was convinced that Betsy was going to win it. And my mother didn't make a great big deal about it, but of course, I won it. Mm -hmm. And Alice had arranged for there to be a luncheon at the country club to celebrate Betsy, and then I won it. It was so unnecessary! But I did start to hear little rumors from the what, other four what, elementary schools. What grade was that? Sixth grade. So going from it. you know elementary school to junior high, yeah. from other schools, that the this plaque, the rotary plaque, caused all this kind of turmoil. Um, because Phil said that somebody told him that the teachers kind of voted for him, but. A lot of the teachers said, oh, we don't want to give it to a Jew, you know. Mm. That was the era. I'm not saying that that era is completely gone, but it was, um... Yeah. Well, it's better to confront the honesty of it than... Yeah. You know. And I think other schools, I remember there... Because all of the smart kids, once we got to high school, we were all, you know, in the honor society and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it's just an example of how adults make life more difficult for children than it needs to be. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. Well, okay. Very interesting. Thank yeah. you.